I'd like to welcome everyone. Today I'm going to introduce you to the topic of my research, which is the study of protein ADP brazilation in tumor cells. Cells are full of proteins, which like tiny automated robots perform various functions in the cell and are guided by physical chemical principles. Much like robots uh, are controlled by switches and electronic signals, proteins can be controlled by the attachment of several chemical groups or molecules. These attachments happen after the protein has been synthesized or translated, which is why we call these modifications post-translational modifications. Post-translational regulation is often dysregulated in many types of diseases, such as in cancer. EDP rebasilation, the topic of my research, is also a post-translational protein modification, where an ADP ribose unit is deposited on a target protein from NAD or a nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Based on the number of units attached to the target protein, we can talk about mono or poly ADP rebasilation. It is uh, generated by ADP ribosyl transferase enzymes or ART enzymes. The most well-known ARTs are PARPs or poly ADP ribose polymerases. There are proteins uh, which contain a specific recognition domain and can bind to ADP ribose, for example, macrodomains. ADP ribosylation is known to have an important role in many uh, important cellular functions, such as in DNA damage repair, DNA replication, transcription, and cell death. Others have shown that in several types of cancer, for example, in breast cancer, the cytoplasmic ADP ribose levels correlate with better prognosis and better survival rate. So the aim of our research is to identify the correlate of the cytoplasmic ADP ribosylation, identify cytoplasmic ADP ribosylated proteins and the arts that are responsible for them, and ultimately, we aim to understand the link between uh, those prominently ADP ribosylated metabolic and signaling pathways and cancer survival. To detect ADP ribose, we chose to use an pro interacting protein called the EF1521 macrodomain. This can bind to both poly and mono ADP ribose. Uh, this protein underwent two amino acid substitutions by site directed mutagenesis. Uh, which enhanced its ability to bind to ADP ribose. Hence, we call this enhanced AF1521 or EAF1521. The protein was expressed in E. coli bacteria, and then it was labeled with fluorescent dyes. In all the experiments presented today by me, you will see ADP ribose in red and the nuclei of the cells labeled with blue. So the labeled macrodomain was then used for cell stainings. What we observed was not a diffusely cytosolic staining, but rather a cytoplasmic but reticular staining that we've examined in two cancer cell lines, HELA and A549, and even in non-cancerous human embryonic kidney cells. With this experiment, we showed that the cytoplasmic ADP ribose suggested as a prognostic, prognostic biomarker must actually be associated with a reticular cytoplasmic organelle. This organelle could either be uh, the mitochondria or the endoplasmic reticulum. For this uh, to find out, we've co-localized with known mitochondrial markers, such as the mitotracker and the TOM20 protein, and we've concluded that um, the macrodomain did in fact label the mitochondria and that uh, Mitochondrial proteins are the major source of cytoplasmic ADP ribosylated uh, proteins. We've also stained untreated and hydrogen peroxide treated cells with poly ADP ribose specific antibody. Uh, the absence of staining in untreated cells and the control stain in the treated cells led us to the conclusion that mitochondrial ADP ribosylation is mono ADP ribosylation, which means that there is only one a unit of ADP ribose binding to the proteins. Uh, it has been proposed that PARP1 could be the enzyme responsible for mitochondrial ADP ribosylation, 
So we've used PARP1 knockout cells, which means that these cells did not have the PARP1 en enzyme inside them. And we stained these uh, hello cancer cells with the macrodomain. And we still could observe the reticular cytoplasmic staining, uh, which meant that the PARP1 can, couldn't be responsible for mitochondrial ADP reposylation. Uh, one of the major processes in which ADP reposylation is known to be involved in is DNA damage uh, response. And the mitochondria also has DNA, so we've treated cells with hydrogen peroxide, a substance that is known to cause uh, DNA damage. Uh, in the treated cells, we could observe that within a couple of minutes, the mitochondrial staining disappeared and it was replaced uh, by the known nuclear DNA damage associated uh, poly ADP reposylation. This meant that the mitochondrial ADP reposylation is not associated with mitochondrial DNA damage and that it is turned over rapidly. We've also wanted to see whether mitochondrial ADP reposylation uh, has a correlation um, with changes in mitochondrial metabolism. So we've uh, taken UTOS cancer cells and treated them with compounds that uh, affect various mitochondrial biochemical pathways. Uh, we analyzed the microscopic images with a computer program and measured uh, the fluorescence intensities per cell and found the following. Uh, so, rotenon and entomycin, which inhibit the electron transport chain, um, led to an increase in the staining, whereas CCCP, which dissipates the mitochondrial proton gradient, led to the fading of the staining. Uh, 2-deoxyglucose, uh, a known glycolysis inhibitor, uh, also led to a slight but detectable uh, decrease in the staining. Whereas the glutamine, which is an important fuel for uh, tumor cells, led to uh, a detectable increase in the staining. To summarize, uh, we've used an interacting domain for fluorescent labeling of ADP ribose, and our results indicate that the cytoplasmic ADP ribose is associated with the reticular structure that corresponds to the mitochondria. We have found that mitochondrial ADP reposylation is mono ADP reposylation and that it is not generated by PARP1 um, and that it is very dynamic and responds to metabolic stimulation and oxidative stress. Currently, we are working towards identifying the cytoplasmic ADP reposylated proteins uh, with high resolution mass spectrometry and uh, we're trying to identify the ARTS, the enzymes that are responsible for these modifications by inactivating the genes of uh, ARTS one by one by CRISPR-Cas9 method. So hypothetically, uh, if the level of mitochondrial ADP reposylation decreases in advanced tumors, it means that the level uh, of its substrate, the NAD, will increase. We know that NAD is essential for the growth of tumor cells, so this could explain why the lower levels of mitochondrial ADP reposylation are associated with worse prognosis and worse survival rate in cancer. For this reason, we can see how the understanding of mitochondrial ADP reposylation could lead to new and innovative solutions in tumor therapy. I would like to thank my mentors, Professor László Virág and Máté Ágoston Nemény, and all the people working at the Department of Medical Chemistry at the University of Debrecen, and would like to thank the Talent Management Program of the University of Debrecen. And finally, I would like to express my gratitude to the National Academy of Scientist Education for their professional and financial support, and for the opportunity to be able to present here today. And finally, thank you all for your attention.